Who still uses a phone booth? <laughs> Better question, where can you even find <laughs> one? Uh, these days, phone booths are relics of history. If I do see one, I did in my in South <laughs> yeah. Dakota at Keystone. We're like, oh my goodness, we took a picture in it. Take a photo. You, yeah. you never <laughs> see one, and my girls were like, what is that? Well, there's a small town in Minnesota that has a phone booth that's telling history outside a local museum. John Lauritsen checks it out. There are many places in Minnesota where biking, business, and natural beauty flow together quite so well. Lanesboro is more than 150 years old, so it has plenty of stories to share. And would you believe that the historian who tells those stories is about seven feet tall and made out of steel and plastic? You remember these, though, don't you? Oh, yeah. Sure, 10 okay. cents. Is that what it was, 10 cents? Back in the day. Okay. Oh, you used to have to call home to get a ride. We didn't have phones in our pockets then. The phone booth on Parkway Avenue has been in town since the 1950s, but a few years ago it was forced into retirement and moved next door to the museum. They decided to decommission it and they called me and said, hey, would you like to telephone booth? And I said, hmm, give me a minute, yes. It was an easy decision because Sandy Webb and others had a new job for the old contraption. Instead of putting in coins and making calls, visitors pick up the phone, hit a number, and listen to Lanesboro lore. This is Sugar Mystery at the White Front. A lot of the stories are told by the people to whom they happened. There sometimes will be a line of people waiting to go in and listen to stories. What they are listening to are true accounts, ranging from drama to humor. When I went to the, to the door to let the dog scamp in, he had a fully cooked turkey in his mouth. This is a hard-hitting story about a dog stealing a Thanksgiving turkey. He set it on the floor and wagged his tail to say, look what I've got. While visitors learn about the city, observers are learning just how out of touch people are with phone booths. And another two and a half feet that way. So we're looking at uh, two and a half by two and a half. Remember, I told you that people would try and fit as many yeah. people as they could in there. I don't know what the record is. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say five. Our research shows two grown men can squeeze inside, but not very comfortably. For younger visitors, this is old school. It's hard to fit this phone in your pocket or play games on it. Do you know how it works? No. Um, you call people? Now what do you do, Mia? I'm <laughs> Because phone booths were a thing of the past before Mia Doherty was born, we let her off the hook. Though she did figure out how to get her change back. I got my cord. <laughs> the hands-on social experiment is just part of the fun. Here, small town pride rings true, thanks to a telephone. People cherishing each other, each other in the community, and their history. People, people in this town really, really care about each other and about, it, about the history. It's very interesting. And you can't make calls in the phone booth, but it doesn't cost anything to listen. I think like the girl in that story. I don't think my girls would know what to do with that either. <laughs> I love that part. At any given time, though, visitors can listen to up to 10 different stories on the phone in the booth. How fun. Yeah. Super cool. Stay with us. Coming up next, we have your daily dose of motivation.